understand that. Amen. So if Jesus is coming back, he's coming back for a reason because he's got purpose and he's got a cause. Amen. So again, I'm going to continue with a message that I started last week because I'm not through with it and it's only fair that you guys get what I get. Amen? Amen. So tell somebody, here comes the judge. So tell somebody, here comes the judge. And again, here comes the judge. The judge is coming, people. Amen. And judgment is coming to this world. Amen. But I want all of you to turn over to, this, to the book of 2 Corinthians. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 5, starting in verse 10. I'm going to just read, give you a brief uh, reminder of where we're at here. Amen. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, starting in verse 9, it says this, Therefore we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to Him. Amen. How many people want to please the Lord? Amen. In everything. Amen. Amen. Therefore, we make it our aim. This is Paul speaking to the church here this morning. Whether we are present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. For we must all appear. Tell somebody all. Oh. That's everybody, people. Amen. Amen. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body. Amen. 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 According, it says, to what he has done, whether it be good or bad. Amen. 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 Knowing, therefore, tell somebody, I know. I know. I know. I know. Well, now you make confession, people. Amen. You just confess to the Lord that you do know. Yes. Amen. Amen. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God. And I also trust are well known in your what? In your conscience, people. Amen. Has your conscience ever bothered you when you did something wrong? Yeah. I know that it has mine. Amen. Amen. And I thank God that the Holy Spirit wakes me up, that convicts me right away in order for my mind not to wander into La La Land somewhere. Amen. Aren't you glad that the Holy Spirit is alive and well in you? That we should know the difference between bad and good. Amen. Amen. I know that I'm not going to finish today, but we may have to go into part three. Because I have so much to share with all of you here this morning. Amen. In verse 11 it says, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, or so we encourage men. But we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known in your conscience. Amen. We should know who this God is. He's an awesome God. He's a great God. Amen. 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 Now turn back over to the book of Romans chapter 2. I'm going to go quickly because I want to get back into the meat of the message here. Romans chapter 2 starting in verse 1. It says, therefore you are inexcusable. In other words, people, you have no excuse and you have no reason that you don't know because you just make confession that you do know. Amen? Amen. 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 Is everybody awake or should I play that song again? <laughs> Get you going again. Amen? Amen. Therefore you are inexcusable, O man, whoever you are, who judge. For in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. Amen? Amen. For you who judge practice the same things. Amen? Mm. But we know... See, here it comes again, people. We know. We know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. Amen. 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 Verse 3. Or do you think this, O man, you who judge practicing such things and doing the same, that you will not escape the judgment of God? Mm. Amen. Amen. Look, we may not see or hear everything that everybody does here, even behind closed doors. But guess what? God does. Amen. God does. Shouldn't that bring some kind of fear into our hearts? Or some kind of conviction? That when we're doing things behind closed doors? Amen. Or behind the bush? Amen. That we should have enough conscience within ourselves to know that this is right or wrong. Good or bad. Amen. But the word is God is telling us here. Look, you're inexcusable. What gives you an excuse or a reason to do what you want when you want? 
Amen. Amen. It doesn't work that way in the body of Christ, people. No, it doesn't work that way in the body of Christ, and we should not be stepping into things that are going to cause us to stumble. Amen. 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 I'm speaking truth here this morning. Yes, and I hope that this message, you, that everyone, even myself, take this message to heart. Amen. Because I don't want nobody to fall. I don't want to fall. I don't want to backslide. I, I want to please the Lord in every way that I can. Amen. I'm not perfect, so neither are you. But God is trying to perfect us. Amen. And we should know what's right and wrong. Amen. Amen. Even the things that you think could be right and wrong. Amen. Amen. Verse 3 again it says, And do you think this, O man, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? Mm. Amen. Amen. Or do you despise the riches of His goodness? Really? Do you throw <laughs> away the goodness of God? Because God is a good God, right? Amen. No, God is an awesome God. We just sang yeah, that song amen. that God is an awesome God. Yes. We sometimes people don't realize how good God is to us. Yes. You know what? If God was to judge us and punish us for all the things that we have done, man, we'd be all stoned to death. Yes. I'm not talking about smoking weed either. <laughs> amen? Seriously, people, we would be all stoned to death. Amen? Amen? amen. amen? Amen. Or do you despise the riches of His goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? Yes. Amen? Yes. See, He wants us to be good guys. Good people. Amen? He wants us to walk in that area of repentance. Like I said last week, there's a lot of people that don't believe that you shouldn't repent every day. We should repent every day. Because sometimes we sin through our eyes. Sometimes we sin through all the things that we're hearing or even saying. Sometimes you're around people and they're talking, they're trash talking. And you're listening to all the trash. You think that that's not going into your inner man? Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Look, I know that I'm talking truth here this morning. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Because there's a lot of trash talking going out there. And what do we do with trash? We throw it out. Don't pay attention to those things, people. When you hear people talking about whatever it is, and if it's not a godly thing, I don't, I'm not saying that you have to walk all righteousness and all holy with blinders like this. Amen. Just get away from all that. Learn how to get away from that. Amen. I know that I have learned to do that, especially in the construction field, because a construction field isn't the happiest place, people. Amen. You hear so much junk, people. Wait till Monday morning comes around. And let me tell you what I did Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. Amen. <laughs> but verse 5, it says, But in accordance with your hardness and your impotent heart, or your what? Your unrepentant heart, it says, You are treasuring up for yourselves wrath in the day of wrath, and revelation of the righteousness judgment of God. Amen. Amen. Look, Luke, Mark, Matthew 6.33 tells us what? What does he tell us to do? Seek ye first what? The kingdom, the kingdom of God and what? No, his righteousness. righteousness. Yes. No, his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Amen. Amen. The kingdom of God is his word, people. To stand right in the sight of God. Amen. No, to stand right in the sight of God and walk in his righteousness. Amen? That no matter what comes against you, because things will come against you, you think that the devil's asleep? Huh? You think that the enemy's not waiting for you out there right now? Huh? He can't come in here. He's been rebuked. Amen. This place is a holy place. <laughs> Amen? I remember somebody telling me that when they walked in here, they could feel the presence of God, and we haven't even started worship yet. Amen. Amen. You know that this place is full of so much prayer? Huh? This place is so full of prayer, it's not funny, people. Amen. 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 But in accordance with your hardness and your impotent heart, you are treasuring up for yourselves wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the judgment of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to what? His deeds. Amen. Be careful of what you're doing. Be careful of what you're saying. Be careful of what you're hearing. Be careful of what you're allowing yourselves to get involved with. Amen? Amen. 
Because there's too many wishy-washy Christians out there. There's too many lukewarm Christians out there. One foot in and one foot out. Amen? Five, six days out of the week, their foot is out. But come Sundays, they're in here praising God. Amen? Acting all holy in righteousness. You think that God doesn't know? Huh? That's why He's telling us to repent every day. Living a life of repentance, people. Amen? Yeah, and you get angry with your wife or your husband, your sons and daughters, your co-workers. You think you didn't commit some kind of sin? Did your anger rise up? Oh, yeah. Amen. This is why it's so. This is why it's so important, people, that when you lay your head upon that pillow, put your head on my pillow. <laughs> is there a song like that? Huh? Yeah. Uh, now she's correcting me. <laughs> His shoulder. Well, you want to sing it, Rose? Okay, then. let me do the teaching. <laughs> Amen. Who will render to each one according to what? To his deeds. Amen. Do you believe that? Yes. Now turn over to the book of First Peter. Amen. I'm going to give you a lot of scripture this morning. Amen. We need scripture in our lives. Amen. In the book of First Peter, chapter four, and verse. Where am I here? Verse 17. Amen. This is this is powerful, people, right here. These few scriptures I'm going to read to you. First Peter chapter 4, verse 17. It says, For the time has come. Tell somebody, the time has come. Amen. Oh, oh. Don't be looking at your watches either, okay? For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. Oh my God, people. If that doesn't bring any kind of a wake-up call to you, you had better wake up. Amen? Yet, it says, For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Sh shouldn't that wake you up, huh? That's a wake-up call. That's a wake-up verse right there, people. We should know. We should know that God sees and hears all. We should know that one day we're going to stand before the Lord, people. Amen? Now, if we can practice His righteousness here on earth, you know what's going to happen when you get and stand before the Lord? You know what? What an amazing event that's going to be, huh? I know that we cry, and, and, and I'll say this, and it's okay if I say this because it's Scripture. On the day that we die, oh my God, when your loved ones die, we should be rejoicing. Yes, right. the grief right. and the sorrow and the tears right. comes and the hurt comes. But my God, people, if we could only see what they're seeing. Right. If we could only hear what they hear. Right. Oh my God, if they could only just tell us what it's like. Yes. Right. Oh my God, you'd want to die today. Yes. Because eventually, right? right. Aren't we all going to die? Yes. Right. Aren't we all going to stand before the Lord yes. one day? Huh? From one day to the next, we don't know what's going to happen to somebody in here. Amen? But all I know is that I know that everybody that's in here right now, when you go home with the Lord, we're going to rejoice. Yes. Amen. We're going to have a party. We're going to celebrate. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. He says, For the time has come for judgment to begin in the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Amen. He says, now, he says, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Amen. Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls. Surrender your lives to the Lord, to Him in doing good, as to a faithful creator. Amen. You know that it's our job to walk in the ways of the Lord every single day. Not when you feel like it. Not when there's a need. Not when the pressures of life are pushing you up against the wall. Amen. We should try to live our life the best way that we can. To do His will. To do His will. To be well pleasing to Him. And to be well pleasing to one another. Amen. 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 Now go over to the book of John. We're going to be all over the place this morning. Here. Amen. In the book of John chapter 3. Amen. 
In the book of John chapter 3, it says this, look. For God did not send His Son, chapter 3, verse 17. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Amen? You know that we have no right to condemn nobody and to judge nobody? You know that's God's job? But even here He says He sent His Son not to condemn us, but to save us. Amen? Amen? If you had a chance to save somebody that was drowning, would you pull, would you jump into the water and pull them out? Yes. Well, that's what God is doing with us spiritually. Amen. He's jumping into the lake. He's jumping into the water to save each and every one of us from destruction, people. Amen. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. It says, He who believes in Him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Mm. Mm. My God, aren't you grateful that you believe in God? Yes. Aren't you grateful that God does not condemn us huh, any longer? Because I'll tell you this, and I, I say this from time to time, we have all made mistakes in life, people. That's right. We have all made mistakes in life, people. Amen. I thank God that God is so merciful to us. Amen. You know that God is more merciful to us than we are to each other? Yes. Huh? You know that you can slap somebody with words? Huh? You can slap somebody with words, people? Huh? Like they say, stick and stone may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's a life from the pit of hell. That's right. That's a life from the pit of hell, people. You know, somebody can say something to you so bad, it will offend you and it will pierce your heart to the max. And you will not want to be around those people anymore. That's right. Amen? Because they hurt your feelings. They hurt your ways. They hurt. They just hurt you. Amen? So we're going to have to learn, people, how to overcome the offenses when they come. Because the Lord, look, this is not a secret for every believer. The Lord told us, the offenses will come. Yes, right. yes. Then why do you get so offended? If Christ is living in you, no, if Christ is living in you, then why do you get offended? Yeah. Why? Somebody said flesh? Yeah, well, look at all the ladies back there. They know the word. Amen. You know why? Because you've been hurt. And you know. Amen. We've all been hurt in this place. Amen. Just a lot of hurting Christians in this place here this morning. Amen. Now turn over to the book of Hebrews. In the book of Hebrews chapter 9. Amen. The book of Hebrews chapter 9 starting in verse 27. Says this, look. And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. Ooh. We're going to stand before the Lord, That's right. people. Yeah. We're going to stand before the Lord one day. Right. Oh my God, people. Doesn't that bring some kind of wake up in your mind, in your heart? Huh? Doesn't that tell us something to start doing things a little better than we are? Yes. Huh? Yes. Amen? Amen. Yes. And, and as it is appointed, this, look, this is truth right here, people. He's talking to the church here. And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. Amen. Yeah. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. He ain't going to die again for us. Right. He ain't going to die again for us, people. Yeah. Amen. How many people have ever called sign for somebody? Oh, yeah. If they go back on your signature, oh, yeah. don't go sign again. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. You're going to get hurt. You're going to get hurt, people. Amen. We've done it once. He ain't doing it again. I don't care who it is. Amen. Amen. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for Him, He will appear a second time apart from sin. For salvation. Amen. 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 So he's going to do away with everything that we've ever committed. Because he came to save us. Not to condemn us. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. 
Now go over to back to the book of Ro uh, Romans. Amen. In the book of Romans chapter, uh, where am I here? 14. I'm, so, I'm here somewhere. Amen. <laughs> Romans 14 verse 10 it says, But why do you judge your brother? Why? Okay, I'll say it to you in Spanish. Tiene razón? You got a reason to judge your brother? No, do you have a reason? No, you're inexcusable. You have no reason to judge nobody. Amen. All you can do is pray for them. Right. Amen? Yes. What if it's the other way around? Right. Right. Huh? Yes. Would you like somebody to judge you no. for your mistakes yes. and your wrongs? Yes. No. no, then we have no right to judge no one. Right. Look, I'm only telling you what God is saying here this morning. Amen? Right. Amen? Right. Okay, this world's already messed up and jacked up. Right. Amen? Amen? Look at everybody. Everybody's pointing the finger in Washington. Huh? The Republicans here, the Democrats here, the conservatives over here, yep. the left and the right, and who's right and who's wrong. Man, everybody's wrong and everybody's right. Amen? But God sees and hears everything. You think that God doesn't know what's going on? Look at everything that's happening not in the world right now. Right now, the world leaders are getting together in France with this G7 co conference that's going on. They're trying to they're trying to come together, but you know what? There's always division between countries. That's right. There's never going to be peace on this earth till Jesus Christ comes back. That's right. But in between now, you keep the peace Amen. within your home, your family, this church, this ministry. Keep the peace within yourself. And you know what? You're going to live a better life. You're going to be able to wake up in the mornings Amen. at peace. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, where was I? 14, 10. Right? Again. Thank God. Somebody's paying attention. <laughs> I'm going to give you a, a little start today. <laughs> Romans 14, verse 10. He says, but Why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, and God is alive, right? Mm -hmm. Every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So, let, so then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. You're going to stand by yourself, people, before the Lord. Amen? Here it comes again, people, verse 13. Therefore, tell somebody, therefore. 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 Let us not judge one another. What? Anymore. 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 That's right. Quit trying to bring up the past. Mm -hmm. Okay, I hurt you. Did you forgive me? Yes. Well, don't bring up the past. <laughs> no, seriously. You know that people like to keep just knocking and banging on you. What are they trying to do? Okay, you, you messed up. Oh my God. So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. What are you going to do when you stand before the Lord and he knew that you were judging and condemning people? And you heard the word? Huh? Didn't I tell you to let it go? How many times do I tell you guys, let it go? Let it go and let God. God will take care of it. Suéltalo. Amen? Amen. Therefore, let us not judge one another anymore, but rather resolve it. Come on, people. Yes. You're, you're old enough, you're mature enough in the things of God, in His Word, to start resolving every issue yeah. that rises up in your life. I don't care if it's in your marriage, with your sons and daughters at home, this church. you got an issue with somebody in this church, you better come see me. Come and talk to me. Come and talk to Pastor Marsha. Amen? Because we can resolve these issues. Right. It's probably petty stuff anyways. <laughs> Guess what? It's time to grow up, people. Amen? Amen? Amen. Why are you out there complaining? Huh? Well, I, I, did you, man, I just can't believe how long they worship <laughs> in this place. I just can't believe Pastor Bob, he's always just... I'm not hammering you. I'm trying to knock some sense into you. So you can wake up to the word. So you won't stumble. Amen. So you'll know the truth. Amen. Amen. 
so that each of us shall give an account of himself to God. He says, therefore, let us not judge one another anymore, but rather resolve this, and not to put a stumbling block or a cause to fall in our brother's way. Oh my God, people. Wake up. That's right. Wake up to the teaching here this morning. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Turn back over to the book of Luke. In the book of Luke chapter 6. In the book of Luke chapter 6 starting in verse 37 it says, Judge not and you shall not be judged. Condemn not and you shall be condemned. Not you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Amen. 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 Okay, can I read it again? Yeah. You guys will get it buried in your heart, so when you leave this place, don't get into an argument with somebody. Huh? <laughs> judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and it and you will be forgiven. Amen. Has anybody ever forgiven you for your faults? Huh? I know that I have. I've been forgiven. Amen. First by God. Amen. Then my wife and my family. It works with everybody in here. Come on. You're not all that holy rollers. I don't see anybody here walking on water. Nope. Well, I don't see anybody turning the water into wine. Can you imagine if you could turn water into wine? You'd be a wino. <laughs> Well, I think I'll just have me another drink. I ain't got no more wine. Give me some water. <laughs> Fill up my cup with water. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Father. Verse 38, it says, Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Amen? 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 Look, a lot of, I know that a lot of pastors, and from time to time, I have chosen this scripture to share about giving and tithing and all that stuff. But it's not necessarily about just giving money. It's about giving. It's upon your measure. If you give love, you receive love. If you give some joy to some people's life, you receive joy. And if you give a little peace, a little peace will come back to you. Amen. Amen. So see, it's not all about money. Amen. 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 But when I was reading that, then the Lord just quickened me this. He just quickened to this to me. Amen. Yes. When you have a need, plant a seed. Yeah, that's right. Amen. 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 That's right. That's right. Speak on it. Right. Amen. 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 You can, that's a t-shirt. <laughs> right here you have a need plan a seed oh pastor but don't talk about tithing here right now okay let's talk about tithing give and it shall be given to you why are you not afraid to give what belongs to God huh? you sure ain't afraid to receive the blessings of God you're praying and believing for the windows of heaven you can't even put a coin into the slot so and you pull it like this so the windows can open <laughs> You guys will get that on the way home. Yeah. Amen. Give, it says, and it will be given to you. Amen. Amen. Yes. Seriously, people. Good measure with good measure, it says. Press down, shake. Man, have you ever have you ever gotten an abundance of something? Huh? Huh? How many no, I, I have to share this with you guys. How many people need a financial blessing? Not a not a want. But you need a financial blessing. Amen. Amen. You have a need? Yes. You have a need? Let me plant the seed. Works every time, people. Works every time. You know that ever since I got the revelation of tithing and giving, giving was nothing to me. Because I used to look in my front pocket to see how much I had to give back to God. After seeing the pastor drive up in his Mercedes, I don't know, well, I'm not going to. So he can fill up his gas tank with my tithe? That's nothing to do with that, people. Amen? Seriously, people, 
You know that we have not looked back ever since we got that revelation of tithing? Huh? Yeah. Sometimes I got more money in my pocket than I do, and I'm still and I still haven't spent my paycheck. Praise God. That's right. Thank you, Lord. I, I, I used to work with this guy when I was working through the union. And this guy was single. This guy wasn't even a believer. He knew about God because I used to minister to him a lot and share a lot of things about God. And this guy, man, he would carry two or three paychecks in his pocket. I says, brother, I says, how come you don't cash them? I says, I don't need to. Wow. I says, but payroll's waiting for you to cash them. He says, well, I says, it was nothing to him. Wow. You know? And working union and getting union wages was good. Mm. It's still good. Mm. Amen? Amen? Don't you want to have an abundance? Yes. Then on, the Lord says, I came to give you life and to give it to you more what? Abundantly. Abundantly? Yes. I don't know what part of that you don't believe, people. But I believe in the windows of heaven. Amen. And guess what? There's more than one window that God has opened. Amen. 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 Yesterday I got a word at the conference. And I tell you, that word that this brother gave me, this pastor gave me, it goes beyond measure. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over, people. Amen. Seriously, he told me that this ministry was going to boom. He doesn't even know anything about me. He says, your ministry is getting ready to blow up. Amen. This ministry is ready to, he says, the financial blessings that are going to come on this church is nothing compared to the financial blessings that you and your wife are going to receive. Amen. I don't know what window God's going to open. I don't care if it's a little window. As long as he opens it. Amen. I'm telling you, the scriptures here, man, you can take it for whatever you want, people. But the Lord says, give. And it will be given to you. Amen. 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 It works every time, people. Amen. Quit hoarding what belongs to God. Amen. You already have too much in your closet. Get rid of it. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Well, I think I'm going to end with this. It's 12.58 and your stomachs are turning. Amen. I hear the little gusanito feed me, feed me, feed me. Amen. Thank you, Father. Let, let me, let, just let me, can I share one more scripture? How many amens? Amen. Amen. The whole church wants to hear it. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Let me tell you what happens, people. You know that people are so quick to condemn people in the church? Yeah. Huh? And to judge people in the church? Amen. Let me tell you what happened to Christ in the church. Amen. After he told them the truth. After he gave them the word. Amen. And you guys know this. Luke 4, chapter 18, verse 18. He says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liberty to the captives, and to recover of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then He closed the book, and He gave it back to the attendant, and He sat down, and the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, it says, to tell somebody today. Today. This scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Mm. Amen. 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 <clears throat> but this is what happened to him after he told them the truth. Mm. In love. Amen. And in verse 28, it says this. So all those in the synagogue, when they heard these sayings, they were filled with wrath. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine, people? I know that sometimes, from time to time, there may be some people, I hope nobody in here thinks this way, that whether it's me or my wife or anybody that gives a word, that you don't get offended. That you don't take off and go and tell somebody you're not going to believe what is going on. And they have no love. <laughs> they have no truth. Man, me dijeron una mentira. No, we don't lie in this place. We have no reason to. I'm accountable to God. Don't you know that every time 
that I open up this word. This is God speaking Amen. to me and through me so you guys can hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Amen. 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 You have to take it for yourselves now. Right. Amen. Whether you believe it or not, it's up to you. I did my part. Amen. Whether you love me or you hate me or you get angry with me or you just, I ain't going, I ain't going back to that church no more. <laughs> no, no, no more. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not going to that church no more. Amen? Amen. So all those in the synagogues, when they heard these things, they were filled with wrath. And they rose up and they thrust him out of the city. Mm -hmm. And they threw Jesus Christ out of the church. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you know how many churches don't allow the Holy yeah. Spirit to come into their churches? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And to allow the Holy Spirit to move and flow. Because the Holy Spirit wants to touch people's hearts, change their lives, mm -hmm. to allow the Holy Spirit to move the way He wants. I tell you what, people, I thank God, people. I thank God that this church does not hinder the power and the moving of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Seriously, people. People may come in here for the first time or second time and they never experience a service like this. And they're going to think that we're radical, that we're crazy, that estamos locos. Yeah, we are crazy. Yes. Yes. They just don't know the scriptures. That's right. They don't understand what we know. Right. They don't understand what we know. For our faith takes us to. Yes. Man, I want everything that God has yes. to give. Amen. And what if there's still some hidden gifts in here that we don't even know of? Huh? And God wants to reveal these things to us. Huh? But as time goes on and the weeks and the months and the years go by and you remain faithful. He says, when you're faithful with the little things, you will do what? Okay, bigger things are coming. Amen. Think about that, people. Amen. So they rose up and they thrust him out of the city and they led him to the brow of the hill on which the city was built, that they might throw him down over the cliff. Wow. Can you believe that? Huh? Kicking Jesus Christ out of the church? Now, it's the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine closing the doors on the Holy Spirit? Oh, yeah. uh, we don't speak in tongues here. We don't anoint people with oil here. You can't raise up holy hands and praise the Lord. Oh, oh this is even better. You can't prophesy in here. Wow. Well, everything you just said comes from God. Why wouldn't you want everything that God has to offer? Huh? If somebody gave you a hundred dollars right now, would you take it? Yeah. Huh? Would you refuse it? No. Why? Because you want it and you need it. And you gotta have it. Amen. Look at all the hands that went up. Financial needs. Oh my God. He's Jehovah Jireh, the one who provides. I'm telling you people, listen to me. Everybody that raised their hands, if you're not in line with the Word of God, you better get in line. That's right. That's right. Get in line with the Word. See what happens. No, get in line with the Word of God and see what happens. Look, I'm not speaking, I'm not speaking a lot. I'm speaking truth here, people. Amen. Why do people find it so hard to give what belongs to God? Amen. When he's telling us here, give and it shall be given back to That's you. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. You know, I remember a couple of years ago, I, I, and I, I think I've already told you this, and I'm not going to name names. Amen. We went to this church in Pomona, and the time for picking up the offering, the tithes, came forward, and I says, I want all the tithers to please stand down. Mm -hmm. And me and my wife, we're just sitting, we're just guests there. I want all the tithers to please stand up, come to the front, leave your envelope here, we want to pray a special blessing over you. <laughs> it's special, because you're special givers. And then everybody else that just gave, uh, we're just going to do a corporate prayer for you. Wow. That's partiality. And that's the worst sin that can come into any church. And we witnessed it. Wow. Yeah. Pity the fool. 
Amen. Look, I pity the fool that messes around with God's word. I pity the fool. This is God's word, people. All he said, just bring. If you don't want to bring it, keep it to yourself. You probably wound up losing it. You probably got a hole in your pocket. That's true. That is scripture. Amen. I pity the fool that wants to come against God's word. Amen. Amen. No, you're not part of the A team. Amen. Because we are a team. Amen. Amen. There's no I's in the word team. There's an E means every. Can you imagine if everybody was a tithe in this place? No, this, listen to me. I need to tell you as your pastor, I want you guys to be set free. I want God to bless you. I want God to bless you the way He's blessed us. I don't need your money. I got my money. And my money ain't funny. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Seriously, people, God has been good. Real good. Amen. Yeah, well, Pastor Bob, you work for a living. Thank God I still have the strength to work. Amen. It's like Paul says, look, I work with my hands so I wouldn't be a burden to the church. Thank God that we're not a burden to this church. You guys don't know. See, God wants to heal your hearts from anything and everything that you've ever been through. Like the song says. Yeah. There's healing in this house. Amen. No, listen to me. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Not only this house, but this house. Amen. Yes. Yes. This is the house that He wants to heal. This is just a building. Right. What if the Lord moves us away to another building? Yeah. Huh? But this is the house that He wants to heal. Right. This is the hurt and the pains that are still in you. Amen. Amen. Give to God and surrender your life to the Lord, people. Yeah. Amen. 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 Let's end up in prayer.